tra the traditional method is finding these tools by hash. Everybody's got these different archive file, uh, different ar archive tool, uh, zips and unzips tools on their machines using uh, hashes is, is just is silly because it's really pointless because what, what, what are you going to look for uh, per se? So, and it also makes you uh, always question what side, what's inside the archive. Hey guys, <clears throat> my name is Tomislav Peruchin. I'm uh, the chief software architect with the Reversing Labs. And before we continue, I'm just going to switch the slides because I'm sure that everything we, we are meant to present till the end of the presentation is in here. Yeah, move the microphone closer or ask yep. people can, can hear you. So this is what we already talked about. And we're going to continue with the story about what we discovered and how. So uh, if you look at the archive formats, usually you're talking about the most popular ones. And these are the ones, uh, zip, rar, cap, 7-zip, and jzip. Now these are the files you will normally find on any operating system uh, and uh, any PC in the world. But uh, if we look at them this way, you will most commonly find these first four on Windows and Unix uh, for gzip. But that doesn't mean that's going to be the case because files are just uh, binaries and they're not binded to the operating system in, in any form. Uh, but we uh, selected to split them this way because their uh, archive processors are commonly built for these uh, platforms. Now, the first format is the zip file format. And it is most common file format in use today. Uh, what's interesting about it is that it's uh, over 20 years old. So it was invented uh, or created in 1986 by Phil Katz for PKZip. Uh, of course, the format itself is fully documented. And this is very important. The documentation for the, this file format is 32K line text file. So if you're implementing your own solution, you really have to go through all of that. And um, even the most uh, popular archive processors such as WinZip haven't implemented all of the features. So uh, you see you can create a file that's uh, legal by documentation, but uh, it really really can't be opened by um, a standard tool that we use today, so, such as the WinZip, which is the most popular zip uh, archive program, PowerZip, uh, WinRAR, and uh, 7-Zip, of course, which is the open source version. Now, this format supports error recovery, multi-disk spanning, encryption, and SFX. It has multiple compression algorithms, but the default one is deflate. Now, uh, the rare file, file format is a very popular one. It was developed by Eugene Rochelle, and it is partially documented. It's a technical note you get with the program, and it doesn't really contain everything you need to know about the format, but it, it's a place to start. So, uh, it is, uh, it's the compression is supported by WinRAR, of course, which is its native uh, archive processor. Uh, you can uh, download an SDK which works with the uh, RAR archives, uh, but it only gives you an option to decompress the archives. You cannot compress them. And these other programs, of course. Now this format, of course, supports air recovery, multi-disk spanning, encryption, and SFX. Uh, those are the most common features we, found, we find in today's uh, archive processors. Uh, compression algorithm is a bit different, but it's based on LZ and PPMD, though it's proprietary, so that's why you need a license for it. Now, the cap file format is a very common installer format. Uh, it's very rarely used by users. Uh, it's created by Microsoft, and it's used as um, installer format uh, for their platform. It is fully documented. Uh, it has a 20-page PDF file you can look at. Uh, it's a pretty detailed one. So uh, the cap file format is, of course, supported by many software utilities, such as Microsoft Windows, who has uh, included uh, compressed folders. And it has uh, support for both zip and cap files. Um, what's interesting is that uh, of uh, all these tools, only Power Archiver can compress files into cap archives. And uh, once you create a cap archive, you cannot add any more files to it, because that's how the specs work. And it supports multi-disk spanning, dig digital signing, and SFX. Uses four compression algorithms, LZX, Deflate, Quantum, and MSZip. SamZip, as we talked, it's an open source uh, format. It started in 2000, and it was developed by Igor Pavlov. Uh, <clears throat> it is fully documented. It has a series of text files. You can look at and see how uh, the format looks on disk. Um, 
its native processor is 7-zip, of course. Uh, all the other tools also support 7-zip. It has multi-disk spanning, encryption, and SFX. It, uh, for compression algorithm, it uses its own uh, LZ variation called LZMA. Now, the GZIP file format is most commonly found on Unix. Uh, it was created uh, in 1992, and it is uh, documented just by a few pages in, in 96. Now, it is also supported by every known and most popular archive processor. Now, it only supports compressing single file. So if you want to compress more files, you have to uh, bind them together with another program, usually it's star, uh, and then compress uh, the end result. Uh, it only uses deflate algorithm. Now, <clears throat> since we know all this about these formats, uh, we wanted to know <clears throat> what kind of... Uh, what does it all mean? It means that all files on the file system are basically just binaries. And if you look at any file, I mean, doc, PowerPoint presentation, movie, or an archive, it's, it's just a uh, binary you can uh, see with the Hackett's editor and edit any bytes uh, to your choosing. But to uh, edit files uh, successfully, you have to know the, the documentation for that particular format in order to modify the file correctly. So uh, what are our goals when it comes to malforming files? From a technography standpoint, we want to hide files or any messages from you, and uh, we want to do that uh, in a process which can be reversed. So once you have uh, hidden something inside an archive, you must be able to retrieve it later. And from a vulnerability standpoint, we don't want to hide anything, but we want to break an archive processor. Now, th this is really neat because uh, multiple security vendors have developed their own archive processors, and uh, since for zip, we said the documentation is 32k lines long. You bet there are some things they looked over. Now, why does fuzzing doesn't apply to this scenario? Because uh, we don't want to crash the program. We just uh, want to uh, break an archive processor so it just skips over a file and doesn't scan it in full. Now, how is it achieved? First and foremost, you have to know the documentation. Nothing can save you from it. You have to read the entire documentation and just think uh, of certain features such as this is something nobody would implement and just try that and if that works with uh, archive processors such as WinZip, uh, you might want to try that with uh, security tools. Now, uh, documentation itself is not perfect. There are some things that are really unclear and if you look at the zip documentation, there are sentences that uh, really don't make no sense. So you can use that to your advantage and Think of the ways how anybody would implement that. You can use rarely used fields, as I said, uh, that is basically knowing the documentation very well. And you can uh, combine a couple of uh, file formats together to create this sort of a weird file. We will present later when we combined a zip64 format with a normal zip uh, format and just try to uh, mess with the format identification so uh, not the proper algorithms are used to decompress the archive. And of course, there's try and error method. You can just try to change some bytes and see how that works or doesn't. Now, uh, steganography is achieved by all of the above. And you can also inject more data into the archive. Now, there were some previous works in this area. Uh, there were some archive malformation tests that were published in 2004 by iDefense. And uh, their implications are quite nicely put by ESET. Uh, I'm going to read this. It says, w uh, the vulnerability was caused by the fact that some archive compression, the compression software, including WinZip, incorrectly handled compression, compressed files with deliberately damaged file headers, thus, in fact, allowing creation of damaged archive files that would automatically be repaired on the victim's computer without notifying the user. And that's, that's what, what this is really about. And this is what we focused our testing on. Now, the first thing we wanted to know is how fast and how accurately are we detecting formats? This is very important because this is the first step in processing any format. Second one is, uh, if you get a file, you have to know if it's valid or not. And if it's corrupted, uh, you have to know uh, what, what amount of data you can recover from that. And of course, if our code was vulnerable to any of the known attacks or the future ones. And then stenography came into the picture, and we wanted to know the following. We know, wanted to know, is there interesting data uh, between all these files and archives? And uh, even so, if there is this data, can we corrupt it? Can this data have a self-destruct button? Now, here's what we found in our tests. 
from second 